Today we're going to have a look at um, some alternator component testing. We're going to do tests on three major components within the alternator. The rotor, the stator, and the rectifier. Okay, we'll start by having a look at the rotor. Now the job of the rotor in the alternator is to produce the magnetic field and that of course rotates within the stator. So we'll just have a quick look at how we're going to test the, the operation of that rotor or the, whether it's good for service or not. So we want to do two, two, three tests. We want to check for shorts, for grounds and for open circuits. We have a coil of wire here. The two ends of the coils of wire come out and join to the slip ring. If we connect our ohmmeter up, we have a multimeter here, and we have the multimeter set on ohms. We can check the multimeter is working by connecting the two leads together, and we should have gone close to zero ohms. There will always be some resistance in the leads and the connections that we make, as long as we're down to about 0.1 or 0.2 of an ohm. So we connect our ohmmeter across our rotor, we should get a reading on our own meter, which we have, sorry, I'll have to have a quick look myself, 2.9 ohms. So we know it has continuity, we know it's not open circuit, and we know from specifications that that is about the correct resistance. So we have continuity in the coil, and we have the correct resistance. We'll also check that it's not, the coil is not grounded out or earthed out to the frame or to the shaft. To do that, we can simply make sure we have a connection on the slip ring, which we have, and check that against the metal surface. And if I can get my fingers out of the way, you'll see that it's open circuit. Now that was reading a little bit of a number there for a while, simply through the resistance of my body. So when you're using an ohmmeter, be aware that if you're holding the problem, problem problems with your fingers that you will create a resistance through your body. Okay, so we know we've got a good rotor. What we're going to do now is we're going to power the rotor up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect this power supply up. So I have a 12 volt power supply here. I'm going to connect it across the slip rings of the rotor. That will energise our coil and produce our magnet. I've got a spark plug socket here and that should be attracted to our rotor to show that magnetic field. Let's see how we go. As you can see by that, we've created quite a strong magnet by connecting our power supply across our slip ring and it sucks the rotor in, the uh, socket in. So that's the operation of our rotor, that's our testing of our rotor. So we've checked for continuity, for shorts by knowing what the specification is. We checked for connection to earth, so a ground, and they'd all checked good. Just for interest's sake, we connected up power to it and energised it and showed that it turns into a magnet. So this rotor electrically is good for service. The only thing I would add is this one is showing quite a bit of wear on the slip ring, so if I did put this one back into service, I would probably replace the slip ring before I did that. But that's how to test a rotor. The next component we're going to test is the alternator stator. So this is a stator out of Bosch alternator. You'll see our three stator leads here. So once again, we're going to be testing for insulation above ground, we're going to be checking for shorts and we're going to be checking for um, open circuits within the state of windings. Okay, from an electrical point of view, we're going to do that once again with our multimeter. We're once again, again going to set it to ohms. We'll check that our ohm meter is working by connecting our leads together and make sure we've got a very low resistance reading, which we have. And then we're going to work through our leads. So you'll know when you looked at stators originally that they have three sets of windings or three phases. That's represented by our three wires here. This is a star connected stator. 
because we can see the other ends of the phases are all connected together here. So, we can connect our ohmmeter across that phase and we have a reading of 0.4 of an ohm. We can connect our meter across that phase, also 0.4. And finally, across that phase, also 0.4. So we can tell by the fact that all the phases have the exact same resistance that none of them are shorted out. If we had one that was particularly different from the others, then we would start looking deeper for another fault. We can also know by this test that it is not open circuit. The last test we want to do is make sure that we don't have a connection between the state of frame and the state of windings. So if we connect one side of our ohm meter to our frame, we'll also check that we have a good connection there. And we have, it's gone down to a very low resistance. And we'll put it on our phase and make sure we don't have any connection to the frame. And as you can see, the ohm meter is reading OL, which is telling us there's no connection between those two. So it is above Earth, it is above the frame. So the insulation, the integrity of the insulation is good. Okay. Last thing you want to talk about is physical things. You'll see with this stator, the windings are copper coloured and quite shiny. Sometimes you'll look at a stator and you'll see one phase is a different colour or you'll see that they're burnt, or you'll go like this, squeeze it together and they'll crunch. That's a sure sign that the stator has been overheated and you would then have to suspect the viability of putting that back into service. Also, the coils sometimes come loose within the frame. So you must check that as well. That all feels good on this one. And we did the electrical checks to show that it um, it uh, was okay from a, an electrical point of view. So once again, this stator should be good to go back into service. The third component we want to test out of our alternator is our rectifier. The rectifier is what houses the diodes. And the effect rectifier is responsible for turning the AC that we produce in our stator to DC that we can use to charge our battery and run the electrics on our car. Okay, we have two rectifiers here. We'll test this one, but I just wanted to show you this one as well. We did mention some rectifiers have eight diodes in them, and as you can see on this diode plate, we have one, two, three, four on that plate, and another four on this plate. Okay, so that's an eight diode rectifier. This has six power diodes. We'll put this one aside for now, and we'll look at this one. Okay, so here we have our six power diode rectifier. We have a positive plate and negative plate. And inside of here, and you may not be able to see this too well on the camera, but we have three smaller exciter diodes sitting underneath that plate there. And that is connected to this point here that goes to the voltage regulator. So to test these power diodes, once again, we'll use our multimeter. And this time, we will set our multimeter to the diode test function. Okay? So, let's do some diode testing. We'll check the diodes, the power diodes in the positive plate first. Okay? So, connect one side of our meter to our battery terminal, and the other side will connect to these three points here, which is where our stator connects. Okay, if we watch our meter and we connect across there, you'll hear it go beep, and we have a reading of there of 0.517. Now this is an indication that this diode is good. That is a voltage, and that's basically looking at what it takes to fire that diode off. Let's go to the next diode, 0.53 and 0.537. Okay, so we've checked these three positive diodes and they check OK. Let's cross over to the others. Once again we connect one to the plate, that's our negative plate, and the other lead is going to be to where our state is connected. So let's see how we go with these. All good. 
Once again, good. Once again, good. Now, be careful, because if you're testing these and you don't put the leads the right way, let's swap them around. Exactly the same test, but we put the leads the other way, we get open circuit. So be aware that it is polarity conscious, and if it's not working the first time the first way, just double check that you haven't made the mistake of connecting the leads up the wrong way. So we've now checked on this particular rectifier, our three negative diodes, our three positive diodes, and now we're going to test the exciter diodes. So once again, we'll be checking across the state of connections to the point where the exciter diodes come out and connect to our voltage regulator. We connect to that point, and once again, across each of our state of connections. Okay, that one's good. That one's good, and that one's good. So this rectifier, all nine diodes, our six power diodes, and our three excited diodes, all test fine. So other than our physical checks, we would make sure it's not coming loose on the connections. We would look at all our solder joints to make sure they are in good condition, make sure the battery terminal is secured securely, and the connections where it would touch on the frame for the earthing are all clean and good, this rectifier is good to go back into service. Okay, so let's try and put these tests together. We had our rotor, we had our stator, we had our rectifier. We know this is produces the moving magnet, this produces the current, and this turns the AC current into DC so that we can then charge our battery and also run our electrics in our car. So what I want to do is show you that this rotor would normally sit inside the stator and then those stator leads would be connected to our rectifier and that's where our wiring would be connected to. Okay, let's just turn this around and what I'm going to do is show you that I can quite easily turn that rotor in the stator. Let's just power that rotor up again So we have that powered up again and now I cannot move that rotor within the stator. And what I'm trying to show you there is the amount of force required to turn that rotor once it has its magnetic field established. And that's why you find a reduction in idle speed temporarily when you put your headlights on or something like that. The alternator powers up and it's very hard to spin inside that stator. So it takes a lot of energy out of your engine. And when we talk about smart alternators, it's a reduction of that amount of energy coming out of the engine that the manufacturers are trying to reduce. So in conclusion, we've tested our rotor. We know this one's good, although we said we would probably change the slip ring because that's showing way too much wear. We've tested our stator. We know that's good. That can go back into service. We've checked our rectifier. We know that's good. That could go into service a while. So that's the basic testing of the major components of an alternator.